The plug-in hybrid lifestyle is not for everybody, but if you're in a situation with a relatively short work commute and you can take advantage of the small all-electric range, they make a lot of sense with fuel economy numbers that would shame a Toyota Prius. The 2021 Ford Escape plug-in is one of the newer contenders to the segment, and it has exceptional efficiency. It's also riddled with flaws. Before we review the new Escape, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also follow us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. Now, let's go Escape together. Sorry. Take one look at the large smiling grill and you just wanna root for this little guy. The Escape is a fine looking crossover. I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but it is hopelessly anonymous. It just blends into everything around it and looks frankly very boring. Think about the Bronco Sport. That's another small crossover in the Ford portfolio. And that thing is bursting with personality on the exterior and the interior. And the Escape, it's, it's just not. The Escape has the same round stature as a Porsche Macan, just without any design elements to help make it exciting. I like the rapid red paint job, but it works better on something more athletic like the Mach-E. And there's only one wheel option, the 18 inchers that you see here, so you better like them. At least Ford included a neat little rear spoiler as well as two exhaust outlets to liven things up in the rear. All right, back to the Bronco Sport for just a second, I promise. The interior of that car is, it's exciting, it's fun. There's bright colors, there's cool shapes, there's interesting textures and materials. The Escape is as bland as it gets in the modern crossover world. The dash, there's nothing that's unique or exciting. The materials around are as plasticky as they come. I know this sounds like very pessimistic and you're probably wondering like, oh geez, like has this guy had coffee this morning? But we review so many crossovers, so it's important to point out when things aren't up to par. Where the Escape gains a few points back is with a nice selection of comfort features like heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, and a wireless charging pad, all of which come standard on the SEL trim. Our test car also has the optional panoramic sunroof and leatherette seating surfaces. The seats themselves are sort of middle of the road. They offer 10-way adjustability on the driver's side, but are not very form-fitting. Over long driving stints, you end up trying to reshuffle your position just to stay fresh. Backseat passengers get decent headroom and legroom, and they have the ability to recline the rear bench if the angle isn't great. But because of the battery pack, which is mounted underneath those seats, those in the back lose out on almost two inches of legroom. The cargo area is funny because Ford quotes 30 cubic feet of optimized space, which basically just means usable room. If you lift this floor area, there's technically more room to put things, but as you notice, there's also a battery placed right in the middle, which makes things less practical. And if you're wondering, this car's chief rival, the Toyota RAV4, has three cubic feet more available, which is one of several areas where that car has the upper hand. More on that in a bit. Ford's SYNC 4 infotainment is one of our favorites in the industry. It's fantastic. Unfortunately, the Escape doesn't get that. It has the SYNC 3 infotainment, which is the older one. That means we get an 8-inch central touchscreen, which isn't our favorite, to say the least, but this car does have an optional full digital cluster. It does have some tech add-ons. It has a $1,000 technology package. With that, you get a 10-speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds wonderful. You get a power lift gate and the wireless charging pad that we already mentioned. That is all well worth the money. Also worth the money is for $895 Ford Copilot 360. You can activate it just on the steering wheel and that is basically their entire safety kit thrown at the car in one very reasonably priced option. We love it. You can do full adaptive cruise control on the highway down to zero miles per hour. There's lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, really good stuff there for not too much money. Before we get behind the wheel, let's talk about charging for a second because that's probably why you're here. Ford Escape Plug-in Hybrid has a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives it an all electric range of about 37 miles. Now, if you're at a public charger like here, charge point station with a 240 outlet, this little guy will charge up in about three and a half hours, a little over three hours. If you're using a standard household outlet, which you can, just 120 volt, will take over 11 hours, but then you just unplug it in the morning and you're on your way. But there's a caveat that comes along with that. Yes, 37 miles is accurate, at least from my experience. With that, you have to be so light on the gas pedal. If you just push into it, the engine wakes up. And when the engine does wake up, it's pretty loud and intrusive. You don't like doing it. 
In fairness, there is an EV only mode, so the car can work just with electricity. And that keeps the engine out of it, but it also takes away a lot of the power of the car. So you better be in a situation where you don't need to go that fast or really just keep up with traffic in general. Total system output for the Escape plug-in is 200 horsepower, which is fine on its own, but when you consider the RAV4 Prime, that has 300 horsepower. That's a different league. I mean, the, the RAV4 is a legit sleeper car. It's where the Escape sort of puts you to sleep behind the wheel. The RAV also has standard all-wheel drive, and this is limited to front-wheel drive. So for our friends in colder climate, that's definitely something to consider. So now you're probably wondering where the heck do the redeeming qualities start kicking in? The Escape plugin does one thing very well. And to be fair, it is the one thing that is supposed to do very well. This car is incredibly efficient. We've been driving it for hundreds of miles all week and the trip computer I'm looking at right now is showing an average of just over 75 miles to the gallon. That's fantastic regardless of context. So if you need a car solely for the purpose of being efficient, this is a good option. The 2021 Ford Escape plug-in hybrid gets a 7.3 out of 10 on our star rating scale. The Toyota RAV4 Prime earned a 9 out of 10 when we reviewed it just a few months ago. The biggest selling point for the Escape is that you can actually get it for a lot less money than Toyota when you consider the RAV4 Prime starts $6,000 more than this and it's definitely prone to dealer markups as well. The car we're testing here costs $40,895 when you bake in everything including all the fees with destination. But the incentives are going to vary state by state. So in California, for example, this car costs more like $33,000. So that means there's potentially a very good deal to be found here. That said, if it was my money, I'd still be going straight to the Toyota dealer. Thanks for watching.